So I turned up at this warehouse somewhere in the middle of London at one point to meet Franny and do what I thought was a voiceover um, for the day to voice this documentary. But um, she said that when I got there, she said, you know, we've not got much money, but there's a little, we've got a little caravan for you to change into and to do makeup and stuff. I said, well, hang on, it's a voiceover. We don't need costume and makeup. She said, no, it's not a voiceover. You're on camera. You're the archivist. I went, what? And you've got to work all these computers. Well, I'm computer illiterate. I mean, I'm, I'm terrible. Neanderthal as far as I was concerned. So it was like, what? Um, but their commitment and their energy and their enthusiasm and their belief in what they were doing, so infectious. Um, you just got swept away with it, really, and we just got on with it and did it. I actually came in towards the la very latter end of the work that they'd done over three and a half years and was slotted in as the archivist to actually give the human element and the human uh, on it, uh, entrance into the film for an audience, for a viewer, that they've got a real person who's talking to them even though it's the last person on earth, yeah. um, looking back at the age of stupid. Um, and it's worked incredibly well, I think. I think, it's, um, I think the result is, um, it, is very refreshing and very um, startling. I think they've got a terrific piece of work. I'd hate to be um, hypocritical about what, you know, I mean, I do feel strongly about this movement to try and get people aware of climate change and that we've got to do something about it. But, you know, you've also got to be aware of your own personal responsibility and where we can do something about it at home. We have done, you know, I mean, even simple things like insulation, you know, you insulate your property so that you're not giving heat out, you're not losing it through summer. And, it, you know, it seems a simple thing, but, you know, it, it's... That will save you 25% on your bill straight away if you do that. We're lucky enough that we're in a place where we can have a wind turbine. The council were great about it. They didn't hesitate to give us planning permission. They had one caveat, which was, you know, don't paint it a garish colour, which is, I don't think we were thinking of having it pink and white striped, um, although it would look quite nice. You know, there are bound to be denied. Whenever you set up a thesis, there's bound to be somebody who's going to come the opposite way and say it's not, it's like Holocaust denied, you know what I mean? And they can stick their heads in the sand if they like. The evidence is absolutely there and graphic for anybody to have a look at. You know, in The Guardian today, for instance, you know, the rainforest, you know, it's actually quicker than we think. You know, the, the estimates for the um, Arctic ice going are actually, under, we've underestimated this today in The Guardian. The naysayers, uh, to me, are a negative force and therefore I just dismiss them, quite honestly. I just put a mirror in front of them and let them fend themselves off and go that way. Because that can be really bad for people who are swaying and, you know, are not sure. And they'll go, they'll think, well, it's too late, you know, because there are some people who disagree with it and therefore what can I do, therefore forget it. And I think that's really bad. So I, I just try and, as I say, I'll put a, a reflective mirror and let it just bounce back on them and go, bye-bye, let's hear the positive things from George Monbiot and all these people who actually... So let them gain say it. I think there's more people coming out of that film who are going, man, oh man, that was something. That was moving, that was exciting, that was terrifying. What do we do? What do we do? And that's the kind of feeling that I think we want to get out of it. And I think that's, the majority of people will think that.